Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Binary Jazz. Come rain, come snow, come disease, come vacations on beautiful coastal parts of the country, come new jobs, come adorable kittens. Nothing Did you say nude jobs? New, not nude. Okay. Nothing will stop another episode of Binary Jazz eventually showing up into your inbox or wherever it is that podcasts go. I'm Chris, <laughs> Jazz Sequence on the internet. Uh, I am joined as per usual with my friends, Gary, who's Binary Gary on the internet, and Allison, who's Allison Plus on the internet. Uh, and it's been a minute. Just when Yesterday. you thought you got rid of us, we're back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I have, go ahead, Gary. Your news is obviously more important than mine. No, it's fine. <laughs> go for it. It's all you. Uh, I was just going to announce uh, that I have uh, conducted, I, I said this on, on Twitter last night, uh, which for you listeners will be a week ago. Um, uh, I have uh, gone through the 2020 rite of passage, which is uh, getting a COVID test. Oh, shit. I missed that. Really? Yeah. Welcome. Oh, that yeah. sucks, man. <laughs> Dang. Sorry to hear that. I, 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 as of like before going into the test, I was about 80% sure that that's not what was going on. And then Aaron has been getting, Aaron has been uh, experiencing symptoms too, like, you know, a little bit like a day or so delayed from me. Uh, and she, and I said like, yeah, I can't taste things very well. And she's like, oh yeah, it's fine. And then she started not being able to taste or smell things. And then she did tons of like, you know, panic research. Uh, and she's like, oh shit, I think we have COVID. So now I'm a little bit less certain that the, the results are going to come back ne negative, but, uh, um, but we have a kitten. So the kitten makes everything better. Well, I'm glad you got tested and I'm glad that if it does come back that you have a kitten to yes. quarantine with. Yes. I feel like these are just like key entertainment yeah, we, points. <laughs> um, we de actually debated because we weren't sure whether or not it would be uh, responsible to go get the kitten. And I'm like, no, we're getting the fucking kitten because the kitten is the <laughs> only thing that makes this better. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, we will be careful. We will wear masks. We will like try not to like touch things or whatever, like, but we are getting the kitten because the kitten is the only thing that's going to make it better. Mm -hmm. How would you rate your COVID test on discomfort on a level from zero uh, to 10? They are doing uh, spit tests. Uh, oh, you lucky. The, I know, right? <laughs> At a lot of the a lot of the Utah uh, test sites, they're doing spit tests um, because spit tests are are as effective as the deep nasal brain swab. Uh, oh, oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and you can give the test to somebody else, and they can do it themselves, uh, which which makes a big difference. So uh, I have two questions. So it was very as far as discomfort, like zero discomfort, because all <laughs> I needed to two. do was spit into a thing. <laughs> Okay, now I only have one question. Actually, actually <laughs> first... I'll, I'll give it. I'll give it a one. I'll give it a one because I actually spit too much the first time, so I had to do it twice. Good problems. So, Good problems. So, so yeah. So out of out of a zero as a zero to ten, I would say it's a one. I, my my first question was going to be like spit test. Like, is that literally just like you spit like in a cup or on like a slide or yes. something, or like someone spits on you and your reaction <laughs> indicates? But you already qualified how it's spit. Ew. Yeah, you're, you're fine. Um, and I forgot what my second question was. It was, uh, oh, how long until you expect to hear results? Um, they said 24 to 36 hours. So within the next, I mean, today or tomorrow, basically. Um, Aaron's sister got tested over the weekend, and she got her results on Monday. Hmm. She got tested on Sunday and got her results on Monday. So I, I would expect a similar turnaround. 
Yeah, when I got tested, they said it could even be like three to six days, and then it ended up being the next day. So I don't know. Well, I think my first words after the swab were, I can't believe I stood in line for this. (laughs) (laughs) That's fantastic. The the nurse was so pleasant, but I was so mad about how uncomfortable it was. Because I was like, I've been through like awkward medical things. This will be a breeze. And then I just got so like, just <laughs> stop this. <laughs> yeah, I, wow. I, I guess what I've heard is that uh, since, since talking to people about it, uh, is that uh, it's less that it like hurts. I was imagining that like it's going to like go up in there and it's going to like hurt. It's going to like just be scratchy and like whatever. But it's it's less that it hurts and more that it just feels really weird and uncomfortable and a little bit like like the the um, one of my coworkers said that it feels like like you need to sneeze without like the lung component of sneezing. Like it's just like the all the, the face ticklishness. Yeah, oh, it's this like this is more uncomfortable than PHP message chaining. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I think, but I think it's like, I think it's so uncomfortable and un, unfathomable that your brain interprets it as pain because yeah. I found myself immediately wanting to like struggle and like move my, like, just basically like a child, just be like, and I was uh, so composed going in and just being like, this is fine. I'm just doing this. And then when she started, I just was like, <laughs> like trying to squirm no. away. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, just because I was just like, this is the worst. I don't want to do this. <laughs> yeah, no, I was, uh, I was, I was nervous about the the nasal swab, so I was very happy. Like I did, I did a little bit of research before, like to see, because I know that I knew yeah. that I knew that Aaron's uh, sister uh, had gotten the spit test too. So like I was like, okay, so where, like, how do we know? Really, <laughs> where do I need to go? I kind of, and so like the place that we would normally go, which is University of Utah uh, Medical stuff um uh they said they switched to all uh all saliva tests and all their well in their main testing locations um a few months ago that's so. awesome so yeah that was like okay cool that's that's where i'm going then meanwhile i, I was in I'm line and there here. was there was a little girl in front of me in line with her dad and like so she was in like the kind of booth like thing that they had constructed next to mine and like she was just like this was like no big deal and i was like wriggling and just being like <laughs> yeah, I did, we, so all the all the at least the u of u testing places are all like the drive-through thing so i never yeah. left my car um, oh that's nice yeah so like you just kind of go in a, a line that's it the, the, they they've constructed this thing out of barricades it's sort of like a disneyland line you know like where it goes back and forth and whatever so you go through uh the barricades and then they give you they take your name they take your name and your birthday uh and and whatever and then they ask you your name and your birthday like five more times and and it's funny because like i when i first check in they have this this person with the laptop and whatever going around and it's like okay um he asked me for my name and my birthday he's like we write and make sure it's, it matches with he says okay they're gonna ask you this like five more times so that's cool um so, so don't change your answer yeah, so don't, change, don't your answer. change your answer well uh, i was adopted they did, in fact, my birthday. they did in fact ask five times so that was uh, that was accurate I remember they did that when I had surgery as well. And like, obviously I would want them to be checking that I'm the right person and like all this, but it got really like, I started like, it's when you repeat something enough, you start being like, am I really this Alice my birthday? <laughs> Is this like, who am I? Is this why I'm here? Like the, they also kept having me repeat the procedure and for one, I can't pronounce it. So then I was oh, just Jesus. like, this is a disaster. I was just like shaking and just being like, just please let's do this. <laughs> I, I love the idea when you go in for um, like surgery that they will take a Sharpie if it's like something you have two of and mark oh, like yeah. the one you're supposed to do surgery on mark the other one with like a big X, like not this one, whatever <laughs> hand or leg or I guess lung. I don't know. Um, yeah. I was really hoping that I would get that like the Sharpie on my, anatomy when I had a yeah my surgeon surgery. my surgeon came in and like signed the side that is like where everything's happening <laughs> and I was like thanks <laughs> yeah they definitely use sharpie on 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 Aaron's knee but they, I don't think they put an x on her other knee <laughs> maybe I've been watching like too that's much more, scrubs that's more confusing <laughs> just, wait, just one what? mark is all we need 
wait, it's the treasure map. This is, is right the here. The treasure's in this guy's leg. <laughs> is the X where we go or where we avoid? Right. right. <laughs> wow, that's a good point. Um, yeah. I'm sure they, they've got this covered. This yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean... Uh, and congratulations on the new cat. Yes, thank you. Yes, she's she's adorable. That's lovely. She's she will pur- she she purrs as soon as you. I mean, she's been purring almost nonstop since we had her. Um, oh, and, and what's her name? Since uh, her name is Juniper. Uh, her name was originally Biso, uh, but we renamed her Juniper. Um, she is uh, Russian bluish. Uh, she's definitely got that Russian blue coloring. Um, and she's incredibly sweet and like they, they handed her to us and she immediately like was like like cuddling and purring and and yeah mm-hmm. so I I feel I've been derelict in my duties of keeping you updated on animals around here but we've had lots of visitors animals? we don't have new animals but we did briefly we've had lots of visitors like a friend of mine was passed through town recently and my parents were in town and my brother's in town this weekend so I've sort of had my head in a bunch of places um but we had a baby squirrel as a resident for a while. Oh, nice. It fell from the tree once and we sort of watched and mama squirrel retrieved it. It fell again and mama squirrel didn't retrieve it. We put it in a box and she finally came and got it. And the third time we did the same thing with the box, but after four hours of like, oh, it was longer than four hours. I spent four hours on the porch. So it was probably closer to six or eight hours of people camping on the porch to make sure none of the uh, local cats got the squirrel in the box. We decided we need to move it inside for the night. And, uh, so for about three days, we had a, uh, a baby squirrel and the kids fed it and Rhonda took it out to see if it was ready to climb the tree again. And finally we called uh, a local wildlife rehab place and went and dropped it off. I should share pictures of this because wow, it was something. The tiny, like how small baby squirrel? Um, so the first time it was very tiny, which was probably three weeks ago. Last week, the third encounter, it was, um, I mean, it, it looked like a juvenile squirrel, like it hadn't like beefed up like a, an adult squirrel and was a little on the small side, but not, I mean, certainly not like a, oh my gosh, so fragile. Like it, it just, you know, was young and still learning and still figuring out that it wasn't a flying squirrel. <laughs> yeah. So all, we have a picture like of all the kids, like holding it and feeding it. And when Rhonda would go down there to feed it, like she would get out of the box and it would like climb and just snuggle right there by her hair. Mm-hmm. Um, pretty dang adorable. Uh, and I was like, I was ready. I'm like, all right, well, let's just build an enclosure in the basement and we'll like slowly work and rehab this thing. And I was like researching how to build this. And I was budgeting out like the best way to do it and finding out the chicken wire is, is too open. This world can escape through that. So you need to be smaller. And, and then Rhonda was like, oh, I found a place we can take it to. I'm like, <laughs> Rhonda's like, you know, those people that like, this is what they do. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, that seems like the responsible thing to do. <laughs> but like is that really what we want to do like is that are we we're sh- we we're want sure to do the responsible thing yeah i didn't i mean just to be clear <laughs> obviously <sighs> it's very weird not being able to taste things i didn't notice yeah. that i wasn't able to smell things that was not a thing that i noticed and then and then aaron pulled out and like said i'm going to do an experiment and she got out these essential oils uh yesterday to see if we could smell anything. So we had like a cinnamon essential oil and a geranium and a grapefruit and a pine needle or something. Mm-hmm. And neither Ooh, of us, awesome. like neither of us could smell them hardly at all. Oh, wow. Like I could, you... I, I could get very, very faint whiffs. Mm-hmm. As you said those, Allison, could you smell them? Like as he said them or imagine what they smell like? <laughs> Well, then when you said cinnamon, I was like, that's a great idea. (laughs) I was just like, I need to go smell cinnamon. (laughs) I don't, I can't think of what geranium smells like, I guess is where I was going with this. Like, it's it's, bam, geranium. I'm like, uh, it's pretty, uh, I would say stereotypically flowery. Like if you think of flowers, like what they smell like. Like that green smell. Geranium. Okay. (laughs) And it's probably... It's, it's probably in the diffuser at some point. I just don't know it. <laughs> but yeah, I, that was, that was, I mean, I didn't, I didn't notice that. I mean, I usually, I can't smell out of my nose half the time anyway. So like, I was like, whatever, this is, I just thought it was the taste thing. Uh, and they asked me about the smell thing and I didn't know that, So I didn't realize that was a thing too, but that's apparently a thing. Yeah. Jeez. Um, Aaron also said that she 
doing some research, he said that in the cases where uh, people have lost their smell and taste, usually that is um, the less serious um, COVID cases, the sort of the outpatient cases as opposed to the inpatient. So I don't know. I, I, I feel better today and yesterday than I did um, the, earlier this week. I felt like shit. But it wasn't it wasn't even like I felt like shit the way that I felt like shit earlier this year, like in February when we got really, really sick. That was horrible. This was mm-hmm. like I feel a little bit achy. Um, I have a mm-hmm. little bit of a cough. Like I have a fever of like one degree. Like it, it wasn't it wasn't it was like, you know, like it was really. But the, the only thing that made us think was that we've been having plumbers coming over doing whole mm-hmm. shit for the last month, really. And on Friday, they came over. There are these two uh, Hispanic guys and they were in the basement and I know they're like, we have had everybody wear masks and they were wearing masks, but when they were in the basement doing the work, they weren't wearing masks because um, they were just around each other. And one of them was coughing pretty heavily. Um, and so it made us think, you know, well, I just, I hope that it, he's, you know, it's just another illness or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that was, maybe that was the vector. I don't know. It would make sense. It would make the most amount of sense because otherwise, because when we were in Mendocino and that was the day after we got back from Mendocino, um, when we were in Mendocino, we were super careful. We were hand sanding everything. We have had, we were, we were in an Airbnb wearing masks. I mean, we, we, um, we uh, were in hotels when we stopped in Reno, both out and, and back. Um, but again, you know, they had, they required masks inside the building, um, hand sanding whenever, you know, we, did anything out and in and so i don't it seems like the the weak link is is maybe the plumbers which which mm-hmm. or but i think that's or or like the 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 cool halloween event that aaron went to uh earlier this week when uh all of uh all of the kids friends parents uh, refused to wear masks and like her and like three other families were like huddling over off uh alienated from the rest of the group because they were the ones that were wearing masks that's so oh it's, it's so rough it's, it's been a thing dude it's been a thing like her uh one of our friends like posted in the group like we're gonna wear masks and the masks are required uh by this place that we're going um and with cases rising you know we should all be careful or do our part whatever and people got super pissed like they got pissed why are you telling me what to do i will do what's best for my family and like Okay, first of all, there's the thing. See, this is this is where I'm gonna get on my rant. Uh, first of all, <laughs> first of all, there's the thing where like I will do what's best for my family. You you can do what's best for your family. The thing that is best for my family is you wearing a mask. Right. <laughs> I am wearing a mask for your family. Yeah, stopping the spread of clinical disease seems like what's best for my family. Yeah, um, I think it's best for everybody. Really. <laughs> I, that's a that's a. That's a very valid point. I think a stretch in this country. Uh, I don't. I don't. Under, I don't understand the 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 personal liberties argument against wearing masks. I just. I just don't. And I don't think I, they. I, I'm, I'm totally that's the with thing. you. Like, that's the thing. Like, and I, I think that like like people get as far as seeing like people wear masks and then people still get sick when they're wearing masks and so therefore masks are not effective. Like that is, that is the logic train right there. And they fail to see that like, if I'm wearing a mask and you're wearing a mask, then it reduces the likelihood. Like it, like when two people are wearing masks, then it's less likely to get sick than if only one person's wearing the mask because the one person is trying to protect the person not wearing the mask. This is, this is like that, that thing uh, where. Trigger, um, trigger warning, uh, content warning for COVID. Yeah, content way. warning. Um, no, no, no content warning. If you're if you're on that side of the fence where you think mask use isn't effective, then you should be listening and you're a dumbass. So feel free to tune out. I feel like it's very similar to like group project work. I think I've made this analogy before where it's like if one person is doing all the stuff, it doesn't actually matter. The project's still not going to get a good grade. But it's like, oh, but if we all did it, then the project would succeed. But it's the like, thing is, the thing I is, feel that, like that, I'm just doing group project work. That, that analogy <laughs> fails because if one person's doing all the work, they're obviously going to pull like a couple all-nighters and they're going to make it work anyway. <laughs> Still going to get so an that, A. So that they get an A and right. then they're going to tell the teacher like, look, so-and-so didn't help. And then like maybe that's that person going to get an F. <laughs> they're not even carrying the other people. But yeah. that's the th- that's, I guess that's the thing that boggles my mind is that like, and then there's like this weird, it's like, I'm trying to think of something that it's 
like there's no way to offset it like if there was a way like if i could just pile on masks on my face like put like multiple masks like i will wear a mask for me and a mask for you that's cool like like that's the thing is that like you can you can do everything right and like still be susceptible and so like it's just like there's also like this weird psychological shame attached yeah it's like getting bed bugs or something. I don't even know what the equivalent is. It's like you you don't have to be a bad person. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, Aaron, it's Aaron just said, like Aaron said that she's she if she, if we do come back positive, she's like I don't know if I want to tell people because of what they will say. Um, yeah, because, because they'll there's immediately this, there's make this, assumption. There's this value that is associated with with being sick. Like you are like it becomes like you are a dirty person. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like bed bugs or something. Like it's not it's not something that you did, but like, like <laughs> yeah, honestly, it's like, honestly, it's a thing that that the people that aren't wearing masks did to me. You know, like, <laughs> like I'm. The one. We've been, no, I don't know. Been, I mean, it, it's yeah. I don't know. We'll see. I'm I'm really I'm really hoping that that it's just some some stupid other thing. Well, that, that's the thing is like when I got tested, it was just like any other year I would have been like, oh, it's you know like an autumn flu right. kind of thing like I wouldn't have thought twice about it I just would yeah. have been I mean like what I do normally when I'm sick which is like lay low and all that but like this year this year's different than other years <laughs> but you didn't notice any any taste or smell things no no yeah. cool <laughs> I mean upside is is if that is what it is I, I think I at least am probably at the tail end of it uh, at least the tail end mm-hmm. of symptoms so yeah um, just a matter of quarantining for hour, however, however long. Yeah. Which you know would be fun to to get to quarantine right before Halloween. Not that we were going to do anything on Halloween, um, mm-hmm. other than we were gonna we were gonna go over to to Aaron's parents' place and like carve pumpkins and stuff and like do like some sort of like <sighs> candy exchange sort of thing, you know, with them. But like, you yeah. know, just just to do something, just to put on our costumes and do something. But yeah. That's yeah, like I'm just basically planning to like, I don't know, go out and look at the full moon if there's not clouds. I don't know. I don't know. Something. So my brother and sister in law coming into town. I bring in my th- my uh niece and two nephews. We're all gonna dress You're... up on Saturday and what are the what are the costume choices that are happening? You know, <clears throat> it's all over the place. So Tyler is um Alexander Hamilton. But mm. like the head of um, currency, so like it's a okay. he's on the ten, right? Ten or five? I don't know. What dollar bill is he on? I'm not sure. Whatever, whatever bill he's ten, on, right? Ten. And I'm pretty sure it's a ten, but I said it and I felt dumb when I said it. So <laughs> I'll, I'll go ten. on the record and say ten. This is binary jazz, so for wrong, it's fine. <laughs> That's a good point. So he's got this. It's, it's beautiful. It's just like a cutout, and his head's in it. It's great. Um, Katie is uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Nice. Um, I love your family. <laughs> Char- Charlotte is a purple bunny. Um, Good. Solid yeah. hit. I am going to be uh, Joe Exotic. Um, nice. And Rhonda is, uh, who's the lady he hated? Oh, Car- uh, Carol Bask- Carol Baskins. Baskin, yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, and we're going to the uh, Transportation Museum in North Carolina, which is like an outdoor thing and limited attendance. And it's great for little kids. I have no idea what my brother's side of the family is going to be dressed as, but I intend to go dressed as Joe Exotic tomorrow. Spend the whole nice. day. Excellent. Excellent. Good choice. And uh, actually, I wish I'd been thinking I would have costumed up for this because my next meeting in about 30 minutes, I intend to go throw on the uh, fake piercings and uh, <laughs> hair and the stick on mustache, at least from the head up, you know, or the neck so, up. Uh, so Gavin has upgraded his uh, steampunk uh, cost- cosplay. It's really more of a cosplay than a costume at this point. Um, so he added a couple things. He got a new set of goggles. He's got like this armband thing. Um, I don't know what he's supposed to be, but it's like some cool steampunky thing. Um, looks, it's looking pretty good actually. Um, and uh, Lila is a sort of vampire princess thing. Um, she uh, is like borrowed one of Aaron's like crushed velvet uh, dresses and has this like cloak thing. And she has a flower crown because she's a vampire princess. Yeah, sure. um, Aaron uh, is Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, and I. Oh no, RBU is going hot this year. A lot of costumes. Even though they actually had a place to wear their costumes, and I don't really, um, 
we said like, you know, wear this, this is too fitting. Um, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so uh, for those of you listening, this is a plague, <laughs> showing up to video calls, <laughs> a, a plague doctor mask. Uh, and I have, uh, I'm gonna, I was going to wear a, a trench coat uh, and I've got like a little like leather hat sort of thing um, and Makes a long so cane and wear some gloves uh, and, and yeah be be menacing and and uh and play that down. mask because, is because it's pretty pretty uh um appropriate especially uh especially given uh this week's uh testing i have a bunch of uh, i have a bunch of <coughs> tissue paper toilet in, well, in, in the mind. beak because i wanted to sort of shape the beak because when it came it was flat let's see how oh, it's, interesting. Been sitting, it's been sitting there for a long time so let's see if it's actually if it actually takes its shape because i don't want to keep the toilet paper in there. <laughs> I think it's I think it's probably pretty good now. Yeah, it kind of folds up. Here we go. It's all right. Anyway, yeah, this might this might be a mask for next year too since, you know, not going anywhere with it. Yeah. It can be like kind of a trial run and then see what happens yeah right deep sigh <laughs> that's what i'm going as for halloween <laughs> yeah yeah it's so appropriate <laughs> we had a uh, tropical storm blow through yesterday mm -hmm. uh which was formerly a hurricane when it hit the gulf coast um and holy cow like i we had raked last weekend but like you couldn't see grass at all in my yard from the leaves and branches and twigs and kind of mayhem, kind of mayhem. Uh, there's a hickory tree directly out in front of me that is like 80% empty now. And yesterday morning, it was almost entirely still full. So pretty fantastic. What was the name of your favorite tree again? Yolanta. Yolanta. That's the name of the tree, or that's a name that you gave the tree? That's the name I gave the tree. It's a hickory tree. Okay. It's a big, regal tree just beyond where the kids play. There's actually a vine working its way up in that I haven't been able to see because of the leaves obscuring it. Uh, I mean, I could see it in the lower levels, but now I can see it almost all the way up. So as the leaves fall, I'm going to be getting that thing pulled down, making sure it's not connected to the ground in any way and feeding itself and taking over that tree. But there's like a branch that's wound around. And... So we haven't topiced. Looking and at fine. trees with Gary. <laughs> yeah, looking at trees with Gary. We haven't topiced. Had a topic. And, and that, uh, that's fine. We can keep it for next week. It's, it's, we're, yeah. we're playing catch up. Um, I feel like, I feel like the two Allison questions that we have uh, in the queue are specifically targeted to be most torturous to me currently. Uh, oh, well, let's read them then. Uh, because... But I, can we just say that I, I submitted them yeah, way before? <laughs> totally, totally unrelated because, like, yeah, they're, they're weeks ago. Uh, but just the timing is pretty damn appropriate. Um, we have, you can only use one spice for the rest of your life. What mm. is it? And no salt doesn't count. Um the only the one spice I would use for the rest of my life in everything would be garlic, probably if I could taste it. Everything's <laughs> going to be like if I could taste it. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Whew. Like, could I cheat and say five spice? <laughs> I, I'll allow it. I'll allow it. All right. Well, like Crystal a, a blend. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I think it would have to be a blend, honestly, of some sort. Uh, sponsored by Penzies. Um, I would okay. probably go cumin. Cumin, yeah, that's a good one. The, the thing about cumin is you can use it in, in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Like it can be, it can be, um, like it's in like chili, but it's also in like Indian food. Like it's in all mm -hmm. sorts of things. Um, yeah. Uh, and then, and then, Allison, question number two. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just, it's almost like, it's almost like you saw it coming. Um, 
Allison, question well, number yes. two is what is the most delicious thing you've eaten lately? <laughs> um, and I would say like, cause so, so part of us realizing that, that the that food didn't taste uh, good. Well, I, so I, I've been, I've been saying that for a while. I've been noticing that like tea hasn't tasted like anything. Um, and just mm -hmm. other things just tasted very like bland. Uh, we made this, uh, uh, Thai curry soup, which is usually amazing, and it just kind of tasted very, very bland. Um, and so, like, I noticed that already. And so then we got Indian food a couple nights ago, um, and that would have been the most delicious thing I've I've eaten lately uh, if I was able to eat if I was able to taste it. I again, it's just very, very like I could I could feel the heat uh, of of some things and like certain flavors um, like zing a lot more like. Um, like the, the, the tamarind sauce for like um, samosas and stuff like I, you know, but but like, you know, had coconut curry and that just kind of tasted vaguely coconutty. Um, mm. Yeah, mm. The, the roti, do, the roti doesn't taste like, I mean, it tasted like cardboard kind of. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's very strange, very strange experience to not. Well, it sounds hypothetically delicious. Yeah, it, so it would be great. The question is most delicious thing you've eaten recently? Most delicious thing you've eaten lately. Lately. No wrong answer. Yeah. <laughs> you could even you could even make something up and we would likely not know. <laughs> Rhonda's sister, uh, sister's best friend is uh, from India. And so she has been like providing cooking tips. So we did like a a mushroom curry that like blew my mind. I say we, Rhonda did, and it was phenomenal. We in the sense that she cooked it and I ate a lot of it. Um, but it would have to be something Indian as of late because there's been a lot of crazy trial and error with Indian food. Um, yeah, why not? Mine Mine is Indian food as well. We've made this dish that's like sag paneer, but instead mm -hmm. of um, the paneer, I guess, you use feta mm -hmm. and it's delicious. Um, and it's like also the most successful we've been with Indian food from this one. But like we've done it before and not to much success, but this was the first thing where I'm like, I feel like we really nailed the spices. <laughs> and we is did that with... Uh, parathas which is are like the it's like potato dough mm -hmm. and then you fry them which i mean like how can that not be good but yeah that's fair <laughs> uh, real feta or like a vegan feta no real feta i couldn't we, find vegan feta we found have you ever found it we have found a vegan feta we haven't cracked into it yet but we but we heard uh -huh. that it existed and we started looking for it um so not sure what we're going to use it on yet, but we have it, and we'll, mm. I will report back. Um, usually, mm. when we do that, we we replace the paneer with tofu, and we do sog, sog tofu, yeah. or tofu nice. sog. Katie um, has decided that she um, she's a vegetarian uh, a couple weeks back, and so that's of course changed dinner. We had like an excellent uh, vegetarian chili not too long ago. That was like lunch for I, me. I call for... that I call that chili. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I could say like, yeah, I could just say chili, couldn't I? Like, it was beef, and then beef free. meat chili is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had that chili, for lunch for no exaggeration, like four carne. days afterwards. Um, ah, good call. Yeah. So I had that. Yeah. So I had that for lunch, and I tried it different ways of spicing it every day for lunch, mm. which was fantastic. It was also regrettable because after a certain amount of spices, days of like really spicy stuff in your body, your body's like, hey. Maybe you could tone it down a little bit. <laughs> Maybe you don't eat chili for four days straight. <laughs> That's another option that I hadn't considered. Maybe I'll keep that in my back pocket for the future. It doesn't seem likely though. No. It's not how I roll. I open the fridge. I'm like, ooh, leftover. Ooh, what's yep. this? <laughs> Is that not the best part of like remote work at working at home? Like last night's leftovers for lunch. It's just... I, I, get, I just get so tired of leftovers, but that's been mostly a problem in the in the last few months that I'm just like, I'm just so bored with food. Like, I'm just like, oh, it's the same. Night. These are the same leftovers. Yeah. I eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
we we've we read stories about people who had COVID and lost their sense of taste and how it it like Aaron's read this one story about this woman who like lost twenty pounds or something because food doesn't taste good. So there's like far less incentive to eat it. Like so, mm-hmm. she just like went on a she went like on a juice diet, you know, like just mm. ate all the things that that she wouldn't eat normally or like did you know like or wouldn't do normally just because because it tastes bad because you can't taste anything anyway so like what's like now's the time to do it um uh and then the novelty wore off um but yeah so so we're we're currently at at the point where um we're kind of uh, wondering how long is it going to last and to what degree it's going to affect our in our like how much we want to like get stuff out and and spend money on on food nice tasting food yeah Yeah. like i'm just gonna make gruel (laughs) It also probably affects how you cook because you taste something and you're like, I don't know if I put too much salt in this. Like, I can't like. I'm a yeah. strict recipe follower. I don't. I don't okay. do that. Oh. I don't do that tasting. While I, I, I mean, sometimes <laughs> I, I just toss stuff in, but like, I, I, tasting and seeing how it go, how it is, is probably not how I work. I wish that I followed recipes a bit more. Uh, when when Rhonda was traveling up here, we were still in Florida and. Uh, I had the kids like one day I was like, I'm making chili and I made the best chili I've ever made. And I and wish I knew how. how you did it. Yep. I have no idea how I, I long for that chili. Honestly, there's no replicating. it. No. It, I mean, and I know that I did weird stuff with it. Like it was like, I looked at like some seasoning and I'm like, Oh, there's only a little bit of this left. Just dump it all in. <laughs> and like, I've still felt like I needed a little more spice. So I grabbed something really bizarre and I wish I remember what the bizarre thing was. And that's why you I was were, like, that's why you're testing all the different spices uh, with your chili leftovers. So you're trying to recreate that that chili. <sighs> I don't think I could by spicing it, honestly, because the nature of that chili was like the the flavor came from it all sitting there and like mm. stewing in itself it's all day. Whereas this was like out essence. of the fridge, spice in the microwave, make it really hot. It was a yeah. little different approach. Yeah, the, the root flavor profile can't be modified. You can only uh, add effects to it. I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know thing about cooking. So if you take away anything from the show, please don't let that be it. <laughs> you got a um, Gary, certified a, chili wizard. <laughs> we have a subscription to uh, Misfits Market, which is one of those like imperfect produce sort of box uh, subscription things too. Uh, so we got our first box. Oh. That was a thing that happened too. Um, that was pretty good. I've never heard of this. Yeah. So like there's imperfect produce is what we heard of, which was because we have friends in the Pacific Northwest who, who did it. And then Misfits Market just became available in our area. Um, and yeah, they're, it's pretty cool. Um, big box of veggies uh, or organic fresh veggies and some like pantry items they have that they sell and um, pretty neat. I have it. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.